a few thoughts here on the last couple of weeks that we've seen uh, in politics. You know, politics and more specifically campaigns, they're supposed to be battles. They should be a conflict of ideas, visions, competencies, and accomplishments. But as we all know, especially in recent years, the campaign season has become the silly season, with the flood of outside money and the focus on all issues other than the substantive ones. This week, however, I think we impossibly reached a new low, and it didn't happen in some backwater district or for a local dog catcher seat. No, this ignominious honor happened in our backyard, and it happened in, of all campaigns, the race for New York governor. When candidates trail big with five weeks till election day, they tend to do desperate things. But I've never seen somebody in our region do something like this. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. These are the stakes. Do we reelect a governor who may end up in jail? Now this is so bad for so many reasons, you could literally teach a college course using this as exhibit of A of what not to do, but I'm going to just hit the highlights. First, it's not just misleading, it's not even in the area code of misleading. When the U.S. attorney, the very guy who's investigating Moreland, criticizes your spot, you know you're in trouble. But you couldn't find a human being with a pulse who actually believes there is even the remotest possibility that Andrew Cuomo will be going to jail for a situation where no one even expects charges to be filed. Second, what the heck does a nuclear bomb and imagery from a 1964 ad from LBJ have to do with this year's governor's race? When you have to explain what you're going for and still no one gets it, you got problems. Thirdly, this is the kind of statement Rob Astorino wants to attach his name to, really? Forget that he could have outsourced it to some third party. He seemingly is proud of that spot, puts his name to it, and maybe that's what troubles me the most. For the better part of the past year, I've told all who have asked not to underestimate Mr. Astorino. He's a facile politician who carries a likability gene, and he unseated an incumbent county exec and won re-election in Westchester County where Democrats, by a healthy margin, outnumber Rob's fellow Republicans. But for reasons still unknown to me, his campaign this summer has tortured the truth, called the highest ranking Republican in Albany Cuomo's, and I'm doing this directly, his prison punk. And he alternated offending both fellow Republican county execs and the business community. Someone, somewhere, someday will explain to me how that's a winning campaign strategy. But you can argue, hey, that's the man's campaign strategy, and while he may be dragging the whole bow of walks even deeper into the mud, it is his business. Except it isn't. This week, Westchester County lost $5 million in HUD grants. Now that's on top of $7 million we lost last year and potentially another $10 million more next year. And it's all because its county executive continues to defy a court order in his Don Quixote fight. It is a senseless pattern that seems to be the crux of the campaign. Insult as many people as possible with no logical endgame and not only hold your county up to ridicule, but in peril, desperately needed funding from Albany and Washington in the process. For the life of me, it's bad policy, it's bad politics, and more simply, it just doesn't make any sense. And here's the worst part. Rob knows better, and his county, it deserves better. All right, when we come back, we will switch gears, and I will bring in the good Dominic Carter to talk about the good Reverend Al Sharpton, who is celebrating his 60th birthday with a big bash. And I'm going to ask how in the heck this guy has turned into this guy. Al Sharpton's transformation, that and much more when we come back.